Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, <clears throat> it's another video where I've got to eat a slice of humble pie, and um, I feel like I have to do this uh, too often, um, which is not very often, but one time is too often as far as I'm concerned. But at any rate, here we are. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to make this more of a um, more of a, an interesting video from a discovery perspective because uh, I was wrong about something, but also in discovering that I learned something new, and that is more important that I learned something new. So this is the Corsair 220T, and this is one of the SP120 RGB fans from the Corsair 220T. I recently reviewed this case, and my biggest criticism of it was that these fans are three-pin fans, and with the setup that I had built to review the case, I could only get them down to a minimum speed of 1000 RPM, which isn't very good for a quiet computer setup. Uh, now, it turns out that my basis for setting up these fans was was on a massive um, a massive assumption or some a, a massive bit that I've missed. So let me show you what happened. Let me switch over to the BIOS view here. So here is Asus QFAN. Um, now, in my previous video about um, setting up fans and three pin fans versus four pin fans, I was using this motherboard. This is a, this is an Asus uh, X four seventy F. Strix. So it's a decent mid-range AMD motherboard. And I was working from the monitor. You can see that our fans are running at about 1000 RPM. And if I run down to QFAN configuration, chassis fans. Um, now what I was running was this setup here. So firstly, we've got, um, we've got, we've got a lower temperature, a middle temperature and an upper temperature. And for each of those settings, we've got the fan speed for that it will aim for at those levels. So we start off, if we're at 50%, we run at, si sorry, if we're at 50 degrees or lower, we run at 60%. If we're at 60 degrees or lower, we run at 60%. And then if we're at 70 degrees, uh, then we aim for 100%. So basically I've just got as low as you can go and then ramp up at the end because we're heating up. And then finally, I've got fan stop enabled. So on the minimum on the minimum temperature, on the lower temperature, it'll actually switch off the fan. And my basis for all of this was that from here, if I type in a lower number here, it just changes it back to 60%. Um, and that is something that I've demonstrated in the three pin versus four pin videos. Now here's the bit. I had some confirmation bias against three pin fans where I assumed that this was the way that all all fan controllers would be set up. Because with four pin fans, you have a full like zero to a hundred percent control over your fans because of the way PWM fans work. Um, and I was like, oh PWM master race, blah blah blah, none of that three pin rubbish. Um, but the big thing that I'd missed is that firstly, when I tested some other motherboards, I tested the recording computer I've got next to me, uh, and I tested my computer at home, and I suddenly found, ooh, those actually allow me to take three pin fans way lower than this. Um, and then in addition to that, I put this fan, um, uh, I put this three pin fan on my DC bench power supply and discovered that it will actually run all the way down to two and a half volts which is way lower than I thought it would. Um, back in the old days, most three pin fans would bottom out at about you know five, five volts or so. Um, however, here's where it comes in. Those were 80 mil fans and that was 10 years ago. This is the new age now. We're running 120 mil fans with modern bearings and modern brush, brushless motors and all the rest of it. Um, and yeah, they can spin at a lot lower voltage and spin down to way lower speeds without stalling. And they can even start at those slow speeds as well. You know, again, in the old days, you might be able to get your fan down to about, you know, four or five volts, but it wouldn't start up from that voltage, which meant you had to set your minimum a bit higher to make sure the fan got that kick to get it going. So then I made a video that just came to the conclusion that this motherboard that I'm using, this, this X470F, was just simply a really bad board for three pin fans. And then finally, just as I was packing up, I thought, hold on a sec, I should probably just make sure that the graphical interface for QFAN 
doesn't give me any additional things that I had not previously considered. So in here, as you can see, this is just a graphical interface for what we were previously looking at. We've got a low, a medium, and a high temperature. And as you can see, based on the numbers that I've dialed in, with fan off, we've got off up to uh, 50 degrees, then 50 to 60, uh, we stay at 60%, which is as low as it would let me go. And then finally, from 60 to 70, we start ramping up. And then just as I was finishing up with that, I saw this button here, optimize all. And I thought, what does that do? I haven't seen that on any other BIOSes. I haven't seen that on the Gigabyte BIOSes that I have on my other motherboards. Let's push it and find out. So what happens with this, if I hit OK, it will actually calibrate the fans. Now for some people, um, watch, the, watch the fan do its thing here while it works through it. For some people, this might have been really obvious. But for me, I've never seen this before. You can see the fan changing speed while it calibrates and discovers the various speeds that it can run at. Yeah, this is really cool. So let this run through. And what it's doing now is it's just very slowly spooling the fan down. It's just running down to lower and lower speeds until it finds the absolute bottom range of the fan. And as you can see, this is getting really slow now. And now it's just stalled. So now if we wait for a moment, now it'll start bringing the voltage back up again until the fan starts spinning. There's our minimum start voltage. So what it's done is it's automatically managed to discover the absolute range of my specific fans. And if we go back to the capture, as you can see, it's determined that these three fans, which previously I could only go down to 60% indicated, now it will allow me to go all the way down to 21%. That's nuts. And when I actually measured this with a multimeter, that's like three volts or something like that. So now, as you can see, we're able to plot a full range. I mean, our minimum is 21%, but come on, 21% is fine. Right, so just for funsies, I'll just dial in just this nonsense minimum fan curve. Ugh, I hate dragging points on graphs like this. Give me numbers. Right, apply. So that's now spooling the fan back down to that minimum speed. Now if we check chassis 2, from a previous minimum of 1000 RPM, we're now running the fan at just 450 RPM, well 460. Now at this speed that fan is pushing virtually no air, but the point is now I can actually plot a range that the fan can go through. You want your minimum to be a useless number because that way you can now have a very smooth transition and that means that it can keep the idle temperatures down for as long as possible before the fan actually spools up. And yeah, that's it. This solves everything basically. And when I checked, and yeah, the other motherboards, they could do it too. And yeah, that's it. So firstly, I went from going, oh, three pin fans are rubbish to going, oh no, it's just my motherboard is rubbish to, oh no, my motherboard actually has the most sophisticated fan controller built into it that I've ever seen. And I misjudged it because I've been using USB fan controllers for the past 10 years or so on my main computers. So rip me. Uh, so yeah. So I retract my previous criticism of the Corsair 220T. The fans are absolutely fine. Uh, learn how to set up your motherboard's fan controller, basically. Bye.